Mark Merovitz, who's professor at the State University of New York, who can help us through this. Um, first things first then, um, Mark, the decision, of course, has been called, I noticed, by Donald J. Trump a... a uh, where's, the, where's the quote from? It, it will be appealed. I'm just seeing that right now. Um, so that uh, is a further update for our viewers this evening. He's, he's called the, the, the decision a sham and other, all sorts of insults and said there will be an appeal. So he goes to appeal, but on the balance of probabilities... How can he win that, given he didn't even bother to give evidence in this particular set of proceedings? Well, the first thing that's very important to understand is this is a civil trial. This is not a rape trial. This is a civil trial, not a criminal trial, and it's for damages. It's not a criminal case. Very important. Second point, juries give $5 million, but then it goes on appeal, and there's something called remittitor, where the appellate court can reduce the damages, which they're going to do in this case absolutely positively. Also, the civil case, the jury finds liability, not guilt, not criminal guilt, by a preponderance of the evidence, not the standard in a criminal case, which is beyond a reasonable doubt. The case that was presented here, the, and it was two parts. One was this so-called this rape case, which isn't really a rape case, it has to do with battery, civil battery, which is com compensated by damages and defamation because Trump said it was a hoax. Now, you can already see here that where the case was presented had many, many loopholes and empty points, but the jury might have awarded this, not sexual abuse, on the, again, I wasn't there, I read about it just like you, on the basis of a visceral feeling where they brought in all sorts of tangential evidence of other people who had encounters with Trump, and remember it's Trump, and remember the, where we are and where this case is proceeding and the whole atmosphere in the media against Trump, all of these things are significant. So the ultimate point is, is this a real valid case? And even if it is, it goes up on appeal and appellate courts routinely reduce these large awards. A defamation case in my, again, when I didn't read all the papers, I don't think it's a very strong case. And secondly, okay. uh, she didn't really remember all the details. And then there was one very interesting part of this that I thought really didn't get a lot of coverage we have a series called Law and Order, a TV show, and it has all these scenarios based on police cases. There's actually a case on the TV show where someone is alleged to have abused someone in Bergdorf Goodman, the department store. And they asked her, does she watch this show? And she says, I do. And did you watch the show about that particular scenario? So there are a lot of very, some very strange things in this case, but the jury's reaction was, very, I think, very visceral. And again, it's the jury. It's on the on the in the civil case. Preponderance of the evidence. Okay. I Mark, don't think can I just jump in here and just ask sure. you about the Trump brand? I mean, we kind of know what the Trump brand stands for. Does this decision, mm. even if it is appealed, does it do him any serious damage in the run up to running for president again? The base that Trump who support Trump will support Trump. And they don't believe any of this. OK, let's let's understand that. But I do think with the uh, Bragg case, uh, the, the district attorney's case indictment of Trump on the uh, hush money for Stormy Daniels and now a decision in liability for Trump, it does chip away at the sort of Teflon that Donald Trump has always had. That is to say, everybody sued him all over the place and nobody could ever, ever get a judgment against him, that has peeled away a bit of that armor where Trump says, you could sue me, but you'll never win. And here, somebody actually won a verdict and won a uh, decision. And that, I think, is significant because it's kind of, you know, when the glass of water starts to get full, every little drop can actually spill over and become very, very important. And that's exactly what's happening with these many cases. The case in Georgia about elections, the case in the New York about the uh, issue of the um, uh, indictment for hush money, and now this case here. All these cases seem to be coming together. So about the brand that you're asking about, it does affect his brand, but does it affect 
his likely chances in terms of his uh, advocates and the base. And there, I think, not necessarily because, again, that indictment really was not a very strong case. Again, it's uh, not, not a powerful case by many, many legal analysts. And this one also, um, you know, yes, there were some elements there where the uh, Jean Carroll said she spoke to her friends, but there were a lot of empty points and loopholes in there which were not solidified. And it went back how many years? It's 25 years, 27 years. I mean, okay. this case is kind of incredible. And in the real world, I'm not so sure that a case like this would really survive very long, but it is Trump, right? So his brand Professor, is what it is. Thank you. We've got to move on. Mark Merovitz, thank you very much indeed at the State University of New York. Appreciate it. Pleasure.